Hello friends, in this video we will learn numericals based on transient analysis. To solve real numericals, first of all we should understand how to do tau calculations. Let us begin. So in this video we will see uh, tau calculations that is nothing but time constant calculations for given networks. What you need to do is we will be concentrating as I said in the last video lecture RL circuit and RC circuit because only in these circuits tau can be calculated. You know the fact that tau is equal to L by R for RL circuit and R into C for RC circuit. In case whenever you have RL elements let's say like as in question number one you can see R and L elements are there try to separate them out separate R from L and then try to get L equivalent and R equivalent from this and then take a ratio L upon R that gives you tau. Let's see in this what we can do. In this you can see that R and L are already separated. They are already separated like this. Now the moment you have sources do replace them with their internal resistances. You know the fact that internal resistance of voltage source is what? 0 ohms. So you need to really short circuit voltage source and you need to open circuit current source. So assume that this voltage source is short circuited now. In that case this 1 ohms and this 1 ohms will come in parallel. So I can say that R equivalent is straight away 1 parallel with 1. So R equivalent results as 0.5 ohms or you can say 1 by 2 ohms. Whereas inductor value is simply 1 entry. Please don't forget you have replaced your voltage source with short circuit. If you replace with this short circuit, this will become 1, this will become 1. So as you can see, 1 ohms and 1 ohms comes in parallel. That way I have taken parallel connection. Now, tau is what? It is L upon, in this case it is R equivalent. L is 1 and R equivalent is 1 by 2. So tau becomes 2 seconds. This is how we really do tau calculations. Let's move to the next question. Question number 2 is appeared on your screen. As I said, when you have different elements, try to separate them out. In this case, again R and L are already separated. At this end, you will calculate R equivalent and from here, you will see what is L equivalent. There is no scope to calculate L equivalent because L is only one element is there, 1 Henry. So L, I can say 1 Henry in advance, whereas R equivalent. Now there is a source, I am sure you remember voltage source should be replaced with short circuit, current source should be replaced with open circuit. So the diagram will be like this, 1 ohms, now this is open circuited and this is simply 1 ohms and from this end you have to calculate R equivalent. Now the problem is this 1 ohms can be redundant, this 1 ohms can be redundant because it is not a part of circuit now. So I can say that R equivalent is simply 1 ohms, L is 1 Henry, tau is L by R, both of them are having one value, so it results in 1 second. That's how it really works. Let's move to the next question. Question number 3 is appeared on your screen. As I said, whenever there is a current source, what you need to do with it, that is open circuit. So let us assume this is open circuited now, resultant circuit I will try to draw. See this is open circuited now rest of the elements 1 here, 1 ohms here. Thereafter inductor and resistor are connected in series. When they are connected in series it is really possible to alternate their positions. I mean I can replace L over here and I can replace R here. So I can draw 9 ohms first and at this point I will calculate R equivalent whereas rest of the circuit is like this. After shifting 1 Henry at 9 ohms place, you can have circuit like this. This is 1 Henry. This is 2 Henry. And this is 2 Henry. So now here you have a scope to calculate L equivalent. So just calculate R equivalent, L equivalent. Take the ratio of L upon R and that gives you tau. So here 1 ohms is redundant because it is open circuit. And due to open circuit, it is not a part of circuit. Remaining 9 and 1 are in series. So R equivalent, I can say it is 10 ohms. Let's calculate L equivalent. 2 Henry, 2 Henry, they are connected in parallel. 2 Henry and 2 Henry when they are connected in parallel, effective is 1 Henry. 
प्लीज रिमेम्बर वेन इट कम्स टू इंडक्टर यू हैव टू टेक अ रजिस्टर लाइक कॉम्बिनेशन एज यू रियली ट्रीट रजिस्टर्स वेन दे आर कनेक्टेड इन पैरल द सिमिलर वे यू हैव टू डील विद इंडक्टर्स सो टू हेनरी टू हेनरी गिव्स यू वन हेनरी वन हेनरी कम्स इन सीरीज विद वन हेनरी बिच बिकम्स टू हेनरी सो एल इक्वल एंड इट्स सिंपली टू हेनरी एंड अगेन टाउ इज एल इक्वल एंड अपॉन आर इक्वल एंड विच इज नथिंग बट टू बाय टेन सो टाउ इज सिंपली वन बाय फाइव सेकेंड्स so this is how we do tau calculations let's move to the next question now question number 4 is now appeared on your screen as i said you have to first of all separate resistors from capacitors here so this is the line i can actually draw where i can separate them so from this end i'll find r equivalent and from this end i can find c equivalent voltage source should be replaced with short circuit so this is going to become a short circuit effectively what circuit it will be very simple this is r this is short circuited and this is 2r and at this end you are going to find r equivalent right so 2r comes in parallel with r so r equivalent becomes simply 2 into 1 upon 2 plus 1 times r which is nothing but 2 by 3 times r so this is your r equivalent let's see what we can do with capacitors as you can see capacitor c and 2c are connected in series so c and 2c as you can see they are connected in series you have to find c equivalent you know the fact that when c1 and c2 are connected in series c equivalent is c1 into c2 upon c1 plus c2 so similar way this will be 1 into 2 upon 1 plus 2 times c this is nothing but your c equivalent so c equivalent is also 2 by 3 times c is it right so now you have r equivalent and now you can actually calculate tau which is r equivalent into c equivalent what is r equivalent check it out it is 2 by 3 times r into what is c equivalent it is again 2 by 3 times c effectively it has become 4 by 9 so it is 4 by 9 times rc and this is your complete tau since the values of r and c are not known to us tau is bound to come in terms of r and c unit is seconds so now let's move to the last question now look at this question here again we are going to separate resistors from inductor the lucky part that they are already separated so i'm sure you must have recognized this is the way we can separate them but the problem is if there are sources if there is a current source we can replace that with open circuit and if there is a voltage source i can replace them with short circuit now the problem begins here here even though there is a current source it is not independent current source it is a dependent current source which i cannot actually make it zero in fact i cannot do il by 4 equal to 0 ampere because it really depends on il value where is il value you can see il value is given in the circuit since i cannot guarantee that this is equal to 0 i cannot guarantee il by 04 is equal to 0 ampere in fact since there is no active source in this circuit it is considered to be a dead circuit i'm sure you must have seen the previous dc circuit video lectures in which we have dealt with this dc circuit where they are considered to be a dead circuit so how to deal with this dead circuit first of all it is a dead circuit in dead circuit r equivalent is found out by v by i method so what i can do is i can keep this source as it is this is 20 this is 10 let us remove the inductor for a while let's have some voltage v here and you know the fact that this current was already there il so i cannot actually remove it it has to be there like il this way so if this is il this has to be il by 4 and let's say this node is vx right in fact you know the fact that suppose if we connect this v over here in that case you have to assume some current i here and you know the fact that by v by i method you get r equivalent so our ultimate aim is to get v equivalent that is v by i 
So let's see what really happens in this. We need to solve this by KCL now. So by KCL, what we are supposed to get is, as you can see, this is incoming current. This two can be taken as outgoing current. First current is minus IL by four. Minus IL by four plus, you can see this is also outgoing current. So I can write as VX by 20. In fact, you can see there is I current which is incoming. I can say minus I it is equal to zero. Am I right? Now the problem is that we want it is in terms of V and I. So as you can see, in this branch, if it is I L and within the same branch, if I claim it is capital I, what does that mean? What's the relation between them? We know the fact that through one branch, only one current can flow. So the relation between I L and I is they are equal and opposite. Means I can replace I L with simply minus I. So wherever there is minus I L, I'll make it plus I or if there is plus I L, I can make it minus I. So here it is minus I, so I can make it plus I. So I can make it I by four plus VX by 20 minus i equal to 0. Again there is a problem. We want only v and we want only i. The problem is vx. Somehow is it really possible to replace vx in terms of v? Let's see. Now look at this i. Can I write this i as it is v minus vx divided by total impedance in the path that is 10. So I can actually rewrite i as check it out i as v minus vx whole divided by 10 v minus vx by 10 by simply ohm's law or i can say 10 times i is equal to v minus vx or i can write vx equal to v minus 10i see if you remember the problem was vx now i can replace vx over here and I can write the modified equation. So in this equation, it was Vx. So now we can modify this equation by replacing Vx with V minus 10i. So let's do this. So what equation I had is I by 4 plus Vx by 20 minus i equal to 0. And the value of Vx that we had is V minus 10i. So now let us replace Vx with V minus 10i. What we get? I by 4 plus V minus 10i divided by 20 minus i equal to 0. As you can see, LCM is 20 here. So I can multiply the first term with 5. So it becomes 5i plus V minus 10i minus here denominator is 1. I can multiply with 20. So 20 times i whole equal to 0. Actually, it is whole divided by 20, but ultimately it gets multiplied with 0. As you can see, minus 10 minus 20 will become minus 25. Minus 25 plus 5 will become plus 20 over there. So now V is equal to simply 25 times I. Or I can say V by I equal to 25. If you remember, V by I is nothing but your R equivalent. So R equivalent is finally 25 ohms. Let's go back to the last slide and see what was L. So as you can see, the value of L was 5 Henry. So now I can write tau is equal to L equivalent by R equivalent. L was simply 5. R equivalent you got 25. So tau becomes 1.5 seconds. That's how we do tau calculations for different RL and RC circuits. As I said, that V of t and I of t were equations where V of t was Vss plus k into e to the power minus t by tau for t greater than 0. Whereas I of t equation, I'm sure you remember in the last video lecture we have discussed, it is Iss plus k into e to the power minus t by tau. The common factor between these two equations was calculating tau. So it was very necessary that this session was required to get tau value. How to get tau value from RL and RC circuits? I'm sure you must have understood with all those possibilities, we can calculate R equivalent, L equivalent, R equivalent or C equivalent. From this, we can do tau calculations. For RC, we do it 
r into c seconds and for rl circuits we do it ly r that is seconds so thank you for watching this video